for the state of the wound. If the wound is healing, if it is, I mean, having passed with them and others. Uh -huh. We also check for the healing processes. If the wound that you sutured, the, the episiotomy you gave after suturing, you need to look if the skin are touching. That is approximation. If you check and you see that one skin is dropping and the other is lying uppermost, the healing is going to be something else. So we look, we need to look out for all of those things. So basically, that is what we will be doing today. And whenever I do the proper examination, I add this. I add the whooping theory. That is, you check for the taking in. If the mother, after giving birth, is taking in, we have created the whooping theory. We have the taking in, taking hold, and then the letting go. I look out for all those things during my proper examination. For time's sake, if we are not able to reach the Rubin's theory, we will continue for the next time. Okay. Okay, so we are going to start. <coughs> my turn. I have my apron here. I have um, gloves. I have the continuum balls. I have the the um, Basically, I was supposed to add gown because you need to change your woman into a gown. She's already in a gown. That's why. So she's anti Zoe. I will establish for her like we do. Well, yes, we, 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 we always establish for her. Yes, so I need to do my rapport establishment before I can start with it. So, Auntie Zoe, I am midwife Marco. Today I'll be examining you from head to toe. I'll check your breast, I'll check your abdomen to check if the um, uterus has descended back into the pelvis. I'll check your legs if you are feeling any pain in the leg. I'll turn you to your back and then do a small palpation at your back if you are feeling any pain. Kindly let me know if you are feeling any pain or you feel uncomfortable in any of the touches I will make on your body. So thank you for now. I wouldn't be using any instrument on you. I'll use my bare hands. Okay. So before I start, I'll go wash my hands and then come back and perform my um, task. Thank you. So I'll do my hand washing. I want to wash. So I'll start from the head. Okay. Please, can you see from the back? <laughs> can you see? After the procedure, I will explain, okay, uh -huh. I don't want to talk while doing it. This is Joy. Do you feel any pain while I'm touching you? Okay. Ma, 
Take the pad and observe the color, the smell, <laughs> and then the quantity in the pad. If there is a need for me to change the pad, I will change it. I have to change it, but for examination purposes. And yes, so good. So I spoke about the observations made there, and I said that you check for redness, the redness of the area, you check for edema, then you check for the approximation. If there was an episiotomy given or test or anything that was featured, you check for the approximation of the skin. Then we can check for the discharge, that is the lochia that we've observed. We know that we have three types of the lochia. We have the root brow, serosa and what? So you look out for all those things. I have to wash my hands, but the time's Now I'll move to the legs. I want to check for the deep vein thrombosis or any pain. We are looking for any sign of inflammation on the leg. So we will check for redness, heat, pain, um, any swelling on the leg. Now before you are able to note that, you hold the leg, tell her not to make it on any chin time, like hard. The leg shouldn't be hard. She should just relax for you so that you can hold the leg properly. After holding, I will feel for any heat here with my palm down the calf of the leg. So I will check for the signs of inflammation here. Now, when I'm done, I want to check if there is any presence of deep vein thrombosis or any hormonal withdrawal on the leg. So, holding it, I will use this hand to flex the ankle in and out. You do it fast to feel for any sharpness, any pain. If there is any sign of pain, she will tell you when you flex the ankle. We are looking for any signs of deep vein thrombosis or any sign of inflammation on the leg. When you are done, you check for paleness, any sign of anemia. We can also check for um, palma plantar creases. So I'll check for the capillary refill. Okay. Noting the number of toes that the woman has. You cannot, let me add this. We can also check for any sign of infection. We, we, we have something that we call a pro. I don't know if you can have. Yes, you can also check in between the toes and look out for that.
Auntie Zoe, I will help you turn to the other side. Thank you. Thank you. So the back, I will rub my hands through the, the spine. If there is any pain, the woman will alert you. Then you do a sacral palpation at the back of the woman. You do a sacral palpation. If she complains of any unbearable pain, now you need to put it at the back of your mind that you are going to suspect any kind of diseases to the kidney. If she complains any unbearable pain, then you note all these things down. So you do a gentle palpation at the sacrum. So Auntie Zoe, I am done with the examination. I didn't find anything that demands um, immediate attention. So all I want to tell you is you have to assess your lochia and then be checking yourself. If you think you are having any foul discharges from your vulva, you are having any pain that you think you, it is unbearable or needs an attention, kindly draw our attention on it. If you feel any sign of um, fever, I mean you are sweating, temperature is rising or anything that you think it's unusual about you, kindly tell us so that we will have uh, an immediate attention on you. So thank you very much. I am done with the examination, but now I want to assess how you are coping with your newborn baby. So as I said, we have the taking in the taking hold and then the letting go. Before you are able to assess this on the woman, you check how she is cooperating with the baby. We are the world. Sometimes you will see a mother giving birth and she don't even want to see the baby. I believe we've all seen that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know that sometimes they show something like postpartum blue. They don't want to see the baby. And then there can also be a situation where you will get a woman at the world, their attention and everything is on the baby. Now she's asking you, how do I feed the baby? Can I feed the, can I give water? You will see someone who is also caring, them caring about the baby. And then you also get someone, she's at the world. But everything she does is, hey, tap your play, if you're there anymore. You get someone like that. She don't even remember she has given birth to a newborn. Right at the hospital, she is showing a sign of letting go. If you see someone at the hospital, all she thinks about is the house. Hey, I don't know when I should resume work. I even have some house on my table. I needed to hear it. I put the pen I'm here. She's thinking about her work instead of thinking about the baby. That is what we call letting go. She's thinking about the routine work, forgetting about the baby she has given birth to. Now you get someone, the attention and everything is on the baby, asking you, what should I give her? I don't know how to change the diaper, especially with the first time. Then. She's asking you, what should I do? How do we change the diaper? What do I do when I want to give the baby food? She's caring. Everything is about the baby. In this case, the woman is taking in. 
please you understand. You get a situation where she is thinking about herself. Eh, and I'm better have three days and son and me. I the the episode told me they gave the way it hurts, eh? And then she call her husband. She see how are you? And please come with me. I'm tired. Take me home. Everything is herself. Everything herself. I know you are not one or two. Please, you understand. Through our during our postpartum time, we need to look out for all these things. If you you see a woman trying to take hold, know what to do. If you see a woman taking in, know what to do. Normally, the lesson go. It doesn't usually okay at the postnatal ward. Because we know that if you monitor a woman for 24 hours and she's okay, she's not bleeding, the, the baby is fine. It is after 24 hours that we discharge them. Am I lying? In a situation where... Oh? Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. So, the next thing go, it doesn't really okay at the hospital. It do okay at home. Someone may not go through all these three stages. Someone can just jump from taking in and go to taking home. Someone can jump from taking home and go to letting go. It, it doesn't follow systematically. It depends on the emotions of the person. Please, are we clear? Okay. After assessing this Ruby theory, we also need to talk to our women what they need to do the danger signs they should expect. In case they see any danger sign in regarding to the baby or herself, we need to educate them to come to the postnatal unit for further treatment. Sometimes, all we talk about is the dressing of the call. We leave them, not talking to them about reporting to the hospital when they have a higher temperature. When they see that they are having severe headaches, when they are having something like a lethargy, muscle weakness, we forget to talk to our women about that. And then we also need to teach the woman about the danger signs of the baby. If the baby is not breastfeeding, you put the baby to breast, breastfeeding and then the baby wouldn't want to breastfeed. If you try to express the breast milk for them, still they don't want to breastfeed. You try all means to breastfeed the baby, they are not responding you see that their temperature is rising. Sometimes they become cold, sometimes they become hot. They also sometimes experience the letharginess. You will see that the baby is quite dark. It is, they only respond to stimulus. Unless you, you make something that the baby has to respond. If not, the baby is down, just sleeping. We need to educate the woman that in case they see anything like that, they should report to the postnatal unit. Please am I clear? It is through that point that we can also teach them the positions of breastfeeding. That one we did it last week. And then any other time they can adapt in breastfeeding their babies. We talked about that. Now we also need to talk to them about vaccines. You you will get someone who is ignorant. She doesn't care about anything. She will go home and even forget that she has to bring the baby for vaccination. So we also need to tell them that they should come to the clinic per the week, the number of weeks we've given to them. Please, are we here? Yes. Are we here? Yes. Okay. Now we are done. I want to go back to what I did on the woman. Am I clear? On my examination, I was checking the head for the temperature, you touch the head and try to feel for the temperature of the woman. You check the eyes for any signs of anemia or jaundice. And then you can also check the nose for any sign of nasal polyp. We see it's normal, but it is not normal. If someone is having that nasal polyp like Nana Bana one, she has brutalized it to be something unique about her that is now, it's abnormal. So whenever we are, I mean, examining our women, we need to find out for all those things. We can also check if they are having this um, 
stuffiness in their nose. If they are having any cold or something, it is easily transferable to their babies. So we need to look out for all those things when we check their nose. Now we check their mouth, they open their mouth, you check the tongue for pallor. For pallor. If you see that their mouths are dry, you can look out for any sign of dehydration. So we can check that on the mouth. Now we palpate their necks. We know that the body is full of lymph nodes. How are we able to determine that a lymph node is swelling? It is only when there is a sign of infection that we see a swelling lymph node. In this case, you need to do a gentle palpation. If you see that there is a ball like thing, you touch it, you ask her, she will tell you, oh, I'm feeling this thing, this sharp pain here. Then you know that. There may be an infection in the body. That is why she's experiencing the swelling in the room. Now, after the neck, we come to the breast. That one, we've done it already. The breast, we check for any abnormalities. Abnormal situation of the nipple, nipple inversion, nipple flatness. If there is a big nipple too, we also need to check. I had a friend who had a big nipple. She gave birth and couldn't breastfeed the baby due to the size of the nipple. So we also need to look out for that. Now, checking for the abnormalities of the breast, we can also feel for the temperature of the breast. We feel it with the back of our hand. Now we can also check, due to the situation where the woman is a breastfeeding uh, mother, Trying to do the breast compression method, definitely there will be a presence of breast milk. So in that case, you can check for the color of the breast milk, the, the smell and everything, yes. Now when you are done with the breast, we know that we also need to do axillary palpation if there is a, a swelling lymph node there. Now, I taught you earlier on that we do the um, inferior and then the superior palpation here supraclavicular and then the infraclavicular you can also do a palpation there to see if there is a swelling lymph nodes now when we are done we move to the abdomen the abdomen will check for the fundal height if there is involution and or sub involution of the uterus we look out for that we can also check there might be an involution or sub-involution, but we know that pregnancy comes with a lot of things. It comes with triad, gravidarium, and a lot. So you can also check the abdomen for the presence of the triad, gravidarium, the stretch muscles, everything, if it is there or um, it's gone. Then we can come to the vulva, of which I use the, the RAUDA method, the R-O-A-D-A. We check for the redness, we check for approximation, we check for edema. And then the edema, how are we able to determine that this vulva is edematous? It becomes what? Puffy. Sometimes shiny. And when you catch it, it's kind of tender. Am I lying? Yes. So if, it, if you want to check for the edematous of the vulva, you can use that to check for it. Then you can also check the discharge, of which we mentioned earlier on, that is the, um, the lochia, the rubra, the serosa, and then the alba. We check for that. If you see that the woman has delivered for like three days and then, so you realize that the kind of clots coming is quite unusual. As, as, as um, a size of an egg or a coin, either the 20 pesos or the 50 pesos or something. Now you know that there is an intervention that needs to be taken. So whenever they come to the postnatal unit, you need to look out for all those things. Then checking for the redness, edema, approximation, the bruises and everything. When you are done, you can come to the leg. We know that during the positioning of them through the labor, and the labor period, they lie for quite a long time. 
you may get a woman who is lazy, you may get someone who is active. That in that case, the woman will be doing brisk walking. But you get someone who will lie down until she has delivered. In this case, they are all prone to different thrombosis. So we need to find out from their legs. If they are showing the signs of infection, you know that there is something you need to do for them. Now coming back to the vulva, we need to check for if the woman is having peripheral sepsis, we know that they have a foul discharge. We need to look out for that too. Then on the left, we can check for plantar pieces. We can check for, um, um, what do we call it? The one that did the finger. We are trying to look out for any sign of anemia. Capillary refill, yes. You can do the same thing to the leg. We can check for extra digits. And then we can check for any presence of infection in between the um, toes of the woman. Then we turn the woman to the back. We check for um, any sign of pain. If you try to do a sacral palpation and she complains, hey, I am I am Now we know that something is wrong with the woman. You need to do a proper investigation to find out what is causing the pain at the same time. Now, we can also observe the buttocks. The buttocks, you cannot do a palpation at the buttocks. Yes. You will just observe and then see if the woman is having any sign of redness. Per the, the type of position she was positioned during labor. You can also look out for that. So that is all about peripheral examination of examination of a peripheral woman. So I'm in for any question, any addition, any subtraction, anything you want to say, it is welcome. You can say it. Sister, for examination sake, I would like to say that you will perform all the tasks and leave the vulva <coughs> on the maybe that, that would be the last thing you do. For example, Students will be forgetting wearing the gloves and they will not remove it after checking them. And then they will continue, continue their routine. The so I think if you are right. First, that was what I was doing, but at the point, people were also complaining that uh, why did you check it before going and then coming back? So, either way, you are correct. The, the reason is if only you remember to remove it. When you are continuing with the procedure, you are good to go. If you think you will forget, you can jump from the vulva, continue with your procedure. When you are done, then you come back to the vulva. It depends on you. If you think you won't forget, you are not going. Any other things you have? Any question? Are we tired? Yes. <laughs>
Who ran for the act? Nobody will pay.